for your just desserts. It's not Take a breath. Are you breathing? Really? I noticed the other day that I hadn't exhaled in weeks. There just doesn't seem to be time under the onslaught of executive orders from the White House. If the number one goal of the incoming administration was to stress civil society, they've done it. They need to dig out George Bush's banner and stand in front of it on an aircraft carrier somewhere. Mission accomplished. And that, I suspect, is exactly the point. If Naomi Klein was writing Shock Doctrine today, I bet she'd call the Trump term so far one great big shock event. Shocks, as we know, are intended to throw society into chaos, and that's just what we're seeing. At least I am. Protests every evening, new emergencies before breakfast. President Trump seems to be pushing every available panic button just to see which ones work. Bald-faced lie to the press and see if they can stay focused. Ban immigrants from certain countries and faiths just to try it out. Fire all the senior State Department staff, the ones with actual relations with foreign leaders. Fire the Attorney General, shake up the National Security Council, and create an unaccountable executive team that is packed with partisan bullies and propagandists, but lacks almost anyone with experience in government. If the goal was to stress civil society, cities, the courts, the press, the diplomatic corps, even the military, check, 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 check. So what's next? As historian Heather Richardson's pointed out, shock events can work in two ways. Confederate leaders used shock to railroad early southern states into leaving the Union. Lincoln used the same shock to pull together a brand new coalition that rededicated itself to government a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, in fact. More prosaically, we can get tired and exhausted and short and impatient with each other, or we can breathe in and consider. Anna Julia Cooper taught us that a bridge or a people is only as strong as its weakest link, and Trump and Bannon seem to know exactly where our weakest link is. It's the one we feel to each other that prophetically American, always bitterly contested definition of the people. The Movement for Black Lives asked the question clearly, whose lives matter? Who's in, we the people, and who's out? I reckon if we can take a moment and breathe into that question, we just might make it through this and even get to somewhere better.